All right, welcome back to the Road to SSL series. We're on episode number two for today. In the last episode, we started our placements in 2v2 and 3v3. We've done four matches in 2v2 and three matches in 3v3. If you missed the first episode, you definitely missed some pretty interesting moments. But as we finish off our placements a bit more, we should get a better idea of where our rank will settle. Also, if you missed yesterday's video, I announced my new RLCS team for the first qualifier. So stay tuned for that. But before we get into the episode, we have to do the meme of the day. And today we have Frosty the Snowman. Let's get right into it. Okay, I have everything I need. I just need a snowman and Frosty. So I'm gonna take Frosty's head and try to put it in the middle of the snowman. We'll see how that, that works. Probably won't. Let's give it a go. Okay, not bad so far. I'm gonna clean him up a little bit. I might not need to worry about that. I'm probably gonna grab the hat of the snowman and uh, make it a separate object. Also real quick, because last time was funny, let's do this real quick. Select the whole box. Snowman. What does AI think a snowman looks like? Okay, okay. Wait, this isn't bad at all. Why is his why is his nose a traffic cone? I might use this. I, I don't know. I'm gonna use the original one. It's it's good, but like I don't I don't really like using AI. Let's let's grab this one here. <laughs> yep. <laughs> what am I doing? Let's match the features of the snowman. I think I just want to grab the eyes and the. Hmm. Maybe what I should do is sort of erase what I don't want to be there, and we will see where we come from there. I don't know what is happening, but we're about to find out if this is very cursed. I'm already thinking it's cursed. Maybe what I want to do is just soften it up a little bit. Oh boy. Okay. I do need to do one thing before I... <laughs> okay. Let's remove facial features. Is this going to work? I don't think this is going to work. Let me grab a lasso here. Remove face. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> There's a double face. Okay. Sorry. I got... I <laughs> When all else fails, we spot heal. Yes, there we go. We covered his face in snow. Now I gotta bring this back. What am I doing? Where has my life come to? <laughs> this is so bad. Um, What am I doing? And then I wanna do like a color overlay. Let's see, color overlay. And I wanna choose like this color. <laughs> you know what? I'm keeping it like this, I don't care. I think it's funny. This is Frosty the Snowman. Hope you guys enjoyed. Let's get into the episode. Yeah. All right. For the first game, we have Trivian and a Burvos with Rosen X. And I didn't have the rank on. So hopefully uh, after this game, we should be able to see where our rank's sitting at so far. Um, waiting behind Rosen here. He's going to turn on this. He's saying great. Why is he being toxic? Okay. I'm going to stay back here. The ball's rolling around the wall, so I can just wait for this. I'm going to try to pop this up. They both go for it. So the reason why I was able to defend that pretty well is because I'm sitting... I'm sitting... Uh, good try. Uh, I'm sitting... That's a nice shot. I'm sitting uh, behind the, the goal, waiting for the ball to pop up off the wall. I know he's going to try and chip it up the ramp. So I'm waiting for the pop. And you can see both players committed for that. That was an interesting touch from my teammate off the backboard. I saw that the, uh, the uh, touch off the backboard was a little bit rough. So he tried to correct it. But in doing so... He uh, ended up popping it back towards the opponent. Definitely could have saved it, but that was a good shot from the opponents. Uh, my teammate's not moving. We could save. He saved it! <laughs> he got a save for not moving. Did my teammate leave because he got scored on? Like, is that really all it takes down here? Yeah, he left. It's a good demo from them. I'm kind of... Great pass, he says. Interesting touch. I'm kind of alone here. What do I do? I'm resisting. I'm resisting the uh, the what a save. I'm not going to do it yet. <laughs> he what a saved himself. <laughs> okay. This has been a weird road to SSL so far. A lot of people leaving. A lot of people just going AFK, making a mistake. Is this guy 1v1ing? Like, is that what's happening here? The other guy's not moving? This guy's decent at driving. He's, he's definitely hitting the ball around. A good, a good challenge. Should I start saying great pass? Come here. <laughs> okay. I got a little toxic. My bad. They hit it forward. This is giving me a lot of space. Like if you're if you're ever in a 1v2 situation, the way to, to play this is to try and stay close to the ball and let them outplay themselves. So you can see here, this guy's trying to like go for a 50. They're challenging the ball, and now I can just let him touch it. 
And you can see when you let the ball drive towards them, or not drive towards them, but roll towards them, and uh, they can hit the ball back to you. And even SSL level players will do this nowadays, where they'll dribble the ball towards the opponent. Oh boy, that was a full head-on collision. Hopefully he doesn't have a concussion. Um, SSL players will even drive the ball towards the opponent, and then they will um, they will stop moving and let the ball roll off their car towards the opponent. The double challenge. Can he get it? They both barrel in. <laughs> They're both in the net. <laughs> I don't know what to do. I'm not supposed to really be playing, like, much. I'm trying to, like, let my teammates do things. But I'm alone. And I'm pretty sure he left because he got scored on. Should I let these guys win? I feel like I should. Because I am I shouldn't really... I mean, Shannon's definitely won games by herself. She's 1v2 people before. It's not like it's not possible. People make so many mistakes that you can really kind of play around it. But I, I don't know if I should give this guy the gratification because he's been spamming. I feel bad because, like, I feel like I shouldn't be, like, locking these guys in an overtime. But I feel like I kind of am. I wonder if I can play this game in such a way that, like, at some point I'll make them own goal. So technically, I didn't, I didn't do it. I didn't win. They lost. Can I do that? Let's... <laughs> I think that's my game plan now. I have no idea. I don't know what to do here. Maybe if, maybe I can make them ongle here. Close. Wait, he left. Weren't they partied up? Why am Why am I in a one v one now? Was that the guy being toxic? Yeah, he he gave up. happening today <laughs> you know what <clears throat> have the ball go ahead nice this guy wasn't toxic so he can have the he can have the goal i think because the other guy left and abandoned he doesn't get any points so we'll take that this has been a wild uh, road to ssl i have no idea what to say gg well played <laughs> that's a plus 50 for that guy i think this guy's still in his placements dingo I'm still not playing the dingo. I'm sorry. So he was silver three. The other guy was silver three. He was actually a proper silver three. He had uh, all of his placements done. This uh, a Burvos guy has not finished his placements. So he's probably been up and down. Either way, let's get in the next game. See if we get 3v3. Yeah. Wow. What a start. All right. Got Brad Shin on our team against uh, Burb and Diego. All right. Let's see how this goes. We have a teammate this time. And we're in 2v2 again. This ball's really high. And we're, I'm watching the approach of of the opponents. I'm just trying to trying to get a read on what they're gonna do. So I can stay close to this, and that might be in their net. Um, I'm trying to stay close to the ball in those situations. My teammate should have that nice finish. It's really scary as the opponents to come and and dive into the ball uh, when the player is behind the ball on the net. It can pay off if you if you challenge it a certain way. We have to be very careful uh, barreling into the challenge. I'm not sure why my teammate said sorry. I'm going to wait here see what happens. The ball's up nice and high. I can sit underneath this. This guy's trying to read it too. Which is totally fine. It's like a 50 that kind of goes in his favor a little bit. I'll let my teammate go in front of me. Now, the normal way you want to do this is have someone push up and make a challenge. That's a great pop. It's too hard for them to read. So most people can't aerial at this point. So I'm just going to flip at this. Okay, I kind of still hit it though. So the, the one guy cut him off. Now I am last here because my my, my opponent my teammate is forward, but um, I can go for that because I can see that there's space uh, to go for the read. Now right here my teammate's trying to back up into the ball once again. He's trying to like stay tracking the ball constantly, which is totally fine. I'm just gonna stay, stay further back. Now, this ball's a little scary. They're kind of panicking on the wall. Let's see if my teammate can get it. Nice shot. That's a really good play. Really good read. Yeah, it was a good read, actually. It was a really good play. So, big mistake from the opponents to roll that ball up the wall. If you're going to roll the ball up the, up the wall of your own goal, you have to make sure you have the ability to go uh, up the wall. It's going to be a little scary. Like If you're going to pop the wall, get used to driving around the wall. Get used to this motion, this movement. It, I know that it can be really weird. The biggest thing that people struggle with at the, at the lower ranks is like knowing which way to turn. Uh, because when you're facing this way and you're looking at the ball... 
like pressing left makes your car go right on your screen. So that's like the biggest thing. Um, but yeah, same thing with like going up the wall. You want to make sure that you're a great shot. Um, you're going to want to make sure that you're able to uh, drive up the wall and, and navigate on the wall properly. So that way you can follow the wall. And like also getting used to being able to pop the ball off the wall um, when it's slightly off the wall is a good idea. Like jumping off the wall and getting used to how that, that feels. So I'm going to go for the, uh, the challenge here. Good boost. Uh, secure. So yeah, the big thing is like when you're when you're in lower ranks, getting used to like how you jump off the wall like this, and like getting used to like how you flip, is like a really good idea. So Brad turns on that. I can go for this. There's lots of space. The ball is slowly rolling off the wall. That's a great clear. That's the kind of thing I'm talking about. Being able to clear it like that. Now in the lower ranks, like usually you can kind of lock people in, like in the defense there, by like constantly just. Taking their clear that they take. Um, this is once again this is a scary situation. Let's see if Brad can, can get it. Good try from them. Good read. The bump out of the net is a great play for them too. Early turn from Diego. This ball spills into the corner, so I can kind of turn around on this and try to stay behind it, and try to keep myself in between. Uh, and my teammate did take this, but there's still space to stay with the ball. And once again, because I see my teammate turning in and, and making the cut. Um, I'm trying to stay in between that. It's going to be a good shot. I'm not going to save it because it's in and it's really high. But you want to jump for that in between the ball. And and uh, there are a lot of training packs that you can do to get used to uh, like saving those balls to the corner. It says defending three times. I'm not sure what that means. But I'm going to go for the ball anyway because that's my job. I think he's still defending. Great boost uh, secured by the opponents there. I'm going to go for the back corner. And try to get in the way of this. The, now the reason why I'm not touching that right away is because the ball would spill off the wall over my head. So instead I wait for it. I can bring it back to my corner and then make a play closer to uh, closer to uh, my team. Good try from my teammate. He was a bit late. He could have made went for that. It was definitely a good setup uh, off the corner. But in that situation, like you need to be closer if you're going to go for it. Once you read that the ball... Is he going to save this? He should... Oh! I own gold. I thought my teammate was going to push up a little bit faster. So I can tell that my teammate's a little hesitant to go up for the ball and stay close um, to the play. He definitely likes to defend, as he said, with the three defendings. I'm going to let him take the mid boost. He can he can go for the play. I'll just go for the back corner boost. Now this ball spills out to me. Um, which, in, in this should be my teammate to finish this. See if he can finish it. Oh, great try. Um, it, it, it should be... Uh, noted that oh he tries to go for it again like it should be noted that like every time i see my teammate like going for um the ball i'm just making sure i turn away and get in a better position great chip towards the net there you go so all i did was just kind of set it up off the wall just try to pop it i see both the opponents like kind of miss and diego tried to get the read and clear to the corner but he just went a little bit too fast he had a lot more time there than he thought he did and a lot of the a lot of like making mistakes is just panicking and not knowing the timing. So getting an idea of like looking behind you and seeing where the opponents are is a good idea to just have more awareness of like what's happening. Like I can see that the opponent is coming towards me, but there's a lot of time to pop it off the wall and just stay close. And a very common way to like make a play in early ranks is to like roll it up the wall like that and sort of just try to get it to spill in front of the net. That's a great chip, it's a little scary. That's a great shot. Once again, that's a good setup from him off the backboard. I'm not going to save that if he it makes a good chip. Because that's pretty hard to read at silver. Um, the way that that's popping like this. But I definitely could have jumped right there and gotten in the way. But either way, it was a great setup from Burb. No, I, I'll say sorry as well. Uh, it could have been me. We both go. Let's see if he goes for this. Try to bump this guy. And there we go. So that's a good example of something you can do when you're off the ball. And obviously, it to depend on your teammate. I have to go for this, but I'm just trying to get in the way of the opponent going towards the ball. It's a really good idea if you're like zoning people to make it harder for them to go for the ball. And obviously that's a pretty high level play, but definitely something to think about um, and keep an eye on that you can do more off the ball. And a lot of pros call it off ball play, like things that you can do to like interfere with the player, make it more difficult for the opponents. And that was an interesting aerial there. It was off the ground. Ooh. Always want to make sure you get in the way there. We could go to overtime here again. But at least we have a teammate to go into the overtime. He's backing off. And it should be overtime. 
All right. It's my job to go for the 50 again. No one's really flipping yet towards the ball. But you should definitely try to do a front flip towards the ball. You'll, you'll beat every opponent in silver if you do that. All right. Brad's first. There's the off ball play. I like that. I like to see that. All right. Pop up the wall. This rolling up the ramp. They're both going for it. My teammate also went for it. It's a little scary. Look at 50 50s. See if my teammate can go for this. Good try. It was, great, it was great for him to be there, but he just got, missed the mark with the shot. It's a little scary, a little fast. Now I can't let this roll off the wall, or I can chip it around the corner like that, and that will keep the pressure off of me. This is a pretty scary play here. Team make a teammate can go for it. He couldn't, and they score. Once again, that's a great setup. I could have probably stopped that, obviously, if I jumped for it. But this situation is like where you're really awkward on the wall. You want to try and roll back into the net. And unfortunately, I think that was, that was actually Brad that, that owned gold. Unfortunately. <laughs> okay, well... Either way, we're back down below 600. I'm not, I'm, I don't know what to do with these early ranks. I don't want to just take over and just guarantee a win. I don't think that's right of me to do that. I think I should play to the, the rank uh, that we're in and sort of try to show what is the most optimal play. We got 3v3 this time. We have somebody who hasn't played yet. I think Sirius is 600. He's a new account. So we'll have to see if he's truly a new account or not. So I believe this is our fourth 3v3 game. Now, the thing is about 3v3 and 1v1 is that a lot of the times, um, uh, somebody like in 1v1, if they're really good, but they're like really low rank, it, it might not mean they're smurf. It might just mean that they don't play ones. There's a good chance here in mid. See if we can score it. Good setup. So I'm going to chip this, but I am last. So I'm going to just stay back. Now, all I want to do is drive my car in between uh, the ball and the goal. All right, I'm going to go for this down the field. It's a pretty fast ball, so it's a little scary. They're trying to read it up the wall. They do miss, but a good save. My teammate was right behind me. That's also really a scary thing about going for balls in lower ranks is that a lot of players will be right behind you even if you're there before them. That's why like, I'm trying to reinforce that if you are the player behind, get a good idea. Now, you want to try and probably grab this before it hits the ground. Because otherwise, it'll bounce over your net. It's a little scary. Oh. This guy's not moving anymore. What happened? Okay, Sirius is waiting on the boost. I'm going to go for a clear into the corner here. And then I'm going to wait to see what they do. Yep. It's like no one has any awareness of cars. They just don't. They only see the ball. It's like I, I mean, I know the game is hard. So when you're playing the game, you're like staring at the ball, like your eyes are pinned on the ball, but try to look over at different things. Like try to see where the opponents are. Try to get some awareness. I feel like everyone's just like a complete tunnel vision on the ball down here. All right, this is a good play. Lots of space. This guy's AFK again too. Like what? I don't understand why people are just AFK. Also, I think he just own gold. Ooh, close. All right. I'm gonna go for the pop here and then I'm gonna go forward. Good demo from Wooly. And I think they own gold. I think Infinite Crab tried to go for that, but I think it was... Yeah, it wasn't him. Yeah, Sirius unfortunately kind of popped it towards the net. Uh, in my zone did finish it, though. So, yeah, the biggest thing is just to get, get a little more awareness of what's happening on the field. Like, everyone's just kind of going for the ball whenever they can. They're driving around. But... I see both my teammates trying to turn at the ball, so I'm just gonna wait. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be the player to be patient and stay with the ball. Think a step ahead. It's very important. Even at lower, later ranks, it's important to be the player that is kind of getting a read on the play later on. That's a great touch from them. Because you can see what happens. Like the second that some wow, what a play. Um the second that you go for a ball and your teammates are all barreling on top of the ball, um, it's gonna be a problem. Like, look, nobody is wanting to be third man. So I'm going to be that player to sort of sit back and get a good feel for where the where the ball's going. This ball's spilling out. I'm still backwards. Now, shadowing is very important. Making sure you're able to drive back and kind of mirror the play. Let's see what happens. Now, they're sitting back a little bit further this time. Whoa. Good try. And now, once again, I'm already rotated back. And I'm becoming that new third player. Now, I most likely will be, like, the player that plays the back the most. Because a lot of players, like I said, will not... Will just refuse to let go of the ball. 
it's definitely got to be a thing we need to teach. Like, the game needs to... Like, Rocket League needs to have a thing that, like, kind of shows a tutorial of how to play positions. I feel like it's super important to, like, end the frustration of a lot of players. Because they just don't rotate properly. And this is a thing that could be just taught in the game as, like, a, a, a quick tips. Sort of like a diagram thing. Great save for my teammate. I'm kind of in an awkward position here because I kind of I rotated in early. I'm just going to wait here and see what happens. Try to get in the way. It's a great shot. I was trying to get, I was trying to drive up to the ball, but my teammate kind of got in the way a little bit. So I kind of waited, but I could have went for it. Yeah, right here. I was in front of, yeah, that's tough. It happens. Just the rotations are a little messy. But when you go for a touch, I, I like rule of thumb, it's not always going to be the case, but like rule of thumb, when you go for a, a touch, try to rotate back. So here I can go for this because I am like in a good position, even though I'm third man. Oh, back it up. That's a great shot. Is it in? So I am still last here. I'm going to let my teammate cut in front of me. Good demo. It was a great demo, but then he uh, got in front of me, unfortunately. This might actually roll in if he can't save it. Yeah, that's tough. Man, we're, we're, uh, we're losing some MMR today. <laughs> he just... He made a good play with the demo, but then just cut in front of me. That's tough. That's tough. We got 16 seconds. Can we make it happen? We got to get a win today, man. Chip it off the wall here. It's a good touch. Kind of pop this off the wall really hard and see if it goes in the mid. Oh. 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 <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> It's still up. It's still up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Oh, man. And and in my zone left. Yeah, the cut in front of me was not great. I will say that. You try to get a feeling. Like I said, get some awareness. Get a feeling of where... Oh, boy. Yeah, infinite crab with 12 points. That's that's tough. You know what happens. Uh, yeah, try to get some awareness of where your teammates are. Um, try to get a feeling for where the rotations are. At this rank, you really just need to play the game more, but there was such an opportunity to score. It's just, unfortunately, a bit of mistiming with the turns and stuff. We'll play one more and see how it goes. Hopefully, we can get one win in this in this episode. All right, so we got 2v2 again. Um, hopefully, my teammate doesn't leave this time if we get scored on. <laughs> uh, we got moving scorpions and Pokemon toes. What the heck? I'm going to pick it up a little bit because I have been doing, like, not a lot. Um... I gotta start like actually playing the game. I feel like I've been kind of like spectating a little bit. All right, good turn for my teammate. Yeah, these players are definitely hitting the ball around. It's decent for that guy to go for that because a uh, moving scorpion's already moving back, but it's a little bit scary if the 50 50 doesn't go well. So you gotta be a little bit uh, careful when you go for that. That's an interesting touch. I feel that was harder to hit that backwards than it was to hit it forwards. Oh, close. All right, I got space here to go for the ball. I'm going to spill this in, see if my team wants to go for it. He's airling early, and they own gold. Uh, it's definitely a big tip, too, to not aerial too early. Because you can see how far uh, this guy was going up. I'm not going to say his name. I, don't, I have no idea how to say that. Uh, but he jumped up super early. And I feel like you just need to make sure you know the timing of when to jump for an aerial and when not to. Yeah, this guy's going for it. So once again, I'm going to be I'm gonna be the bigger bigger person and just leave. This is a bit of a scary situation. Good try. There we go. And I'm going to stay behind the ball. And I can try to angle the ball in so that it, it kind of... Wait, oh, this guy's twerk, twerking a net. What's happening? Okay. Um, yeah, so I'm going to just try and... Like, I'm trying to just direct the ball, just trying to get little touches. This guy was <laughs> having a moment in net. I'm sorry. Let's wait behind and see what this guy does. I'm just gonna sort of just get a read on where the where the 50-50 goes. So it goes off the wall. I can be the player here to get the read. And then I'm gonna loop out. Good try for my teammate. Um another shot here, see if we can save it. Good try. I kinda helped save it. I think it might have been out, but I, I didn't want it to <laughs> just spill in with a high touch like that. Let's see if we can. Yeah, see how I'm the one player that's not in this jumbled mess? Just get a good feeling for, like, where where you should be. 
You don't need to be on the ball every time. Now this ball is spilling around the wall, so I'm just gonna sit in a in a good spot to get a clear. You're always gonna be playing a game of catch up. <laughs> you're always gonna be playing a game of catch up if you're always chasing the ball. A good example of that is if you watch the tetherball video where Coconut uh, couldn't really get a read on the ball. I'm not saying he chases the ball. It's just that if you're not playing ahead of the play, you're just going to be chasing the ball at all times and never actually doing anything with the ball. So you, you kind of want to be a step or two ahead. They have possession right now, technically. So they hit the ball to me. Now I can go for this. And now we're waiting for the ball to spill in the mid. It's a great shot off the backboard. I'm just going to jump and pop this. Then my teammate can try going for it. Good try. I can cut this off, off, off up the wall here. And I am still last man, so I'm just going to wait and see what happens. I like that rotation for my teammate. He actually went back. It's going to spill up nice and high. See if my teammate can get this. That's the wall clear I was talking about earlier. So that, that player definitely knows what he's doing with the wall touches. That's good. Now what I can do is just drive into this and get a chip. It's going to spill in the mid. Great clear from Scorpions. At this point, my teammate should be backing out. I can do a lot with this ball. I can take this over to the corner. And even though the opponent is chasing it, I had control there. Nothing to worry about. It's a high chip. So I'm just going to wait. Big bumps. I'm going to stay in between the ball. There we go. And now I'm going to try and direct the ball towards the net. I'm going to just drive it towards the net and see if they cut it off. Oh. Good chip. This could be scary if my teammate doesn't get this. Great clear. That's the timing you want to find. I did miss the second one, though. I'm going to go into this really early. Ooh. He backflipped. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. That's a chip off the, off the post. Close. A little scary in it. A little dicey. No need to panic, though. All right, so I have time here. I see the I, I my eyes were shifting over to the opponents, and I saw both of them were kind of sitting still. So I, I knew I had time. I, once again, that just comes from getting awareness from not just staring at the ball. Okay, I kind of half flipped. Kind of uh, a little advanced. My bad. It's actually really hard for me to just to backflip. My my brain just wants to half flip. Now I am backwards here, so I'm going to go behind my teammate and let him do what he wants to do. Good clear. I'm going to grab this boost to steal it from the opponent and see what happens with this clear. It's going to bounce off the corner, so I'm just going to wait for it. And I'm turning in immediately. You can turn on a dime pretty tight, as you can see. If you don't if you don't hold accelerate, look how big your circle is when you accelerate. But if I just, if I just like, you know, either hold drift to really turn or you can tap drift to do tighter turns and not really lose control of your car. Yeah, faster turns, the better. Our first line of defense got knocked out, out, out by a uh, bump, so I'm just going to go for the touch now. I can get a touch off the wall here. There's 10 seconds left. Let my teammate go for this. Good try. That's a good touch. Let my teammate go for this. It, I'm out of position now, and there we go. So not bad. We got one, well, I think one win out of the whole episode, uh, but definitely a lot, a lot to learn for lower level players. A lot of mistakes that will be uh yeah that's 700 like the thing is like it doesn't feel like i'm doing very much but then i have 724 points it's so hard to gauge like what i'm doing like i guess it's all the saves and just like center balls and stuff that i was passing to my teammate but either way i hope you guys enjoyed i tried to like keep it pretty uh pretty close to the rank and i feel like i did a decent job but at the same time we did have a, a bunch of levers and stuff and afks i don't know we've almost got our placements done in 2v2 we should have a couple more games and i think we're only at four out of ten for 3v3 I think we're going to see 2v2 a lot more until the ranks get higher because more people play twos. So until then, we'll have to see. We'll have to see if we get SSL in 3v3. It might take a long time. I'm not even SSL on my main account because I don't play it. But I'm sure as the, as the season goes on, it should be easier to get there. I hope you guys enjoyed. Until next time, have a great day. I'll catch you guys in the next one.